Hi, it's Emily from Kids Lit Book Love. I'm here to talk to you today about Misty of Chincoteague by Marguerite Henry. I'm super excited to share this book with you. This, if you grew up in the 70s or 80s, you may recognize this vintage copy, which was popular at the time. I, as a child, between the ages of 8 and 10, uh, in late early 80s, had this book. And I recently had a hankering, not this particular one, but I had a hankering recently to reacquire it because I remember that I loved it and I don't know why. I didn't remember the story. I didn't remember anything about it. So I went on eBay and I found this copy for $20 and I'm super lucky. It's a 1978 vintage edition signed by the author Marguerite Henry with a personal message in here to the little girl at the time. Here is Marguerite's signature. It says, Hi Tanya, I'm the real Misty. Greetings to you from Marguerite Henry. I'm delighted that you share my love of horses. And I got this in the mail just yesterday. I was super excited and I sat down and I cozied up and I read it straight through. Like in two hours, I couldn't stop reading it and it's um, not at all what I remembered. In fact, I didn't remember anything. I didn't remember what it was about, but this um, if you know anything about Marguerite Henry, she wrote a whole slew of horse book stories. There's um, Misty of Chin <laughs> Chincoteague, if I'm pronouncing that right. There's Stormy Misty's Fold. There's Black Gold. And um, she, this book was published and written originally in 1947. And Marguerite Henry, as a child, she had a lot of physical issues between the ages of 6 and 12. She couldn't go outside the house. So, because she, she had some kind of fever, rheumatoid fever or something like that, and so she she started writing and and developed her love of writing and animals, and so she became an adult and got well. She married um, a man that she, well, you know, was her soulmate, and she could they couldn't have children. So over the next sixty years, they had all these horses and animals. So Misty of Chincoteague is a wonderful book, and. I can't recommend it enough for um, your your children, a little bit older children, or yourself as an adult. I loved it, loved it, loved it. It's a very simple story. It's um, it's easy to read, as beautiful illustrations throughout. And that's another thing about Marguerite Henry about this book, which which won several awards. In fact, this book won the Lewis Carroll Shell Award and the Boys Clubs of America Award. And her book, King of the Wind, won the Newbery Award. Um, which is on the back of the book, it says here. So, she, and these are all of her books on the back. And I just ordered, by the way, Black Gold and Misty Stormy's Full. As soon, I was only halfway through and I jumped on eBay and looked for hard copies from the 70s also of her other two books because I want the series and I found them and I bought them and I can't wait to get them and I'll do a separate review of these. But the book um, is beautifully illustrated and Marguerite Henry wanted to find an illustrator that could do really realistic horse drawings and... Um, horse drawings and photos um, or you know representations of how she saw horses and this has an illustration on almost every page I absolutely love it beautiful drawings it's really a beautiful book and um, some are color and some are black and white Be I mean just beautiful drawings through the book and I it was easy to read and the pictures really complement what's going on on each page and the story. There are a few pages that don't have photos, but, um, are photos, <laughs> drawings, but really beautiful book. And the story here is that, um, the first chapter is really, I mean, okay, I have to say there's a little bit of animal, you know, I'm a vegetarian, I'm an animal rights activist, so I don't love the fact that it's about capturing wild horses and breaking them, but it is what it is. But um, the first chapter is really pr prior to um, Misty. It starts out with Misty's um, mother, who was on a Spanish a ship from Spain with a bunch of other horses are being brought to the New World by, I guess, I don't know, pirates or whatever they were. And the ship sinks <laughs> very close to the shore of Virginia and... Um, uh, Chincoteague Island, which is a strip of islands among, uh, you know, off the coast of Virginia. And the horses make it there, even though the people don't, fortunately, because they were bad. And so then, um, and the thing about Misty, this book, is it's historical fiction. So everything in here is based on real events. It even says right in the front, not necessarily the timeline, but Misty was a real horse that belonged to Marguerite Henry. And in the story, um, 
after the horses come and they get settled in the new world on the island or whatever, then um, it's about these two little, this little brother and sister, the Beeb um, children, who get it in a, a hankering to sort of capture the, um, they want to capture, well, not capture, but every year historically on this island, all the locals would, would get together to do a pony penning event. They would try to round up the, these wild horses that roam free on the island. So sometimes they get them, sometimes they wouldn't, but there's this mysterious phantom horse who was like this beautiful sort of white, just phantom horse that the little boy and girl wanted to catch. They wanted to keep it for themselves. And so the boy must be like, 12 or 13 because he gets on the horse another horse and rides with the others to, to try to capture and get the horses but they do get her and but they're surprised to learn that she has a baby so um and the baby becomes misty the one that they keep eventually but though it's really a, a beautiful story it's all about these children who who work hard to earn the money to get the horse and sort of save her from the auction where once they capture the wild horses the adults they sell them off so and then they start racing the horse, you know, not Misty, but they race a couple of the other horses. And at the end, the mother gets set free. So I was really surprised. I expected this book to have um, a sense of uh, a literary device called anthropomorphism, which is means human qualities given to animals. Like a lot of books you see, like Wind in the Willows and The Cheshire Cat and Alice in Wonderland, um, you have talking animals that seem human-like. But I thought that's what this would be, all the talking horses, and I thought it would be bored. Not at all. I was so surprised, and I didn't remember. But really, it's about um, the the it's the scenes that are just about the horses, mostly or only in the beginning, are told from a storytelling perspective, like somebody watching them and telling you about their life. But mostly from the perspective of the children and the people. So there are a lot of people and plot scenes in here. The only difficult thing about the book that might be hard for a younger child um would be there's a little use of dialect with the grandparents the little children live with the grandparents it's never said what happened to the parents but they live with their grandparents and sort of a very distinct southern dialect much like what you'd see in huck finn or tom sawyer so when the grandfather speaks it's very it's a little harder to read i mean i had to really slow down to to visualize what he was saying because you talk you know he drops all the g's off of his his adverbs, you know, like sitting or running would be running and sitting and hankering and and um, a lot of choppy kind of word abbreviations to emphasize the dialect. So those particular conversations with the grandfather were a little bit harder to read. But otherwise, it's just a really wonderful book. There's nothing, no animal cruelty, anything like that. Um, very simple story, but just a beautiful, beautiful, lovely book and a very nice story and very nice prose um you know it jumps pretty quickly from when they when they get the horses to suddenly they're they're ra racing some of them with no big gap in between of how they're training them that was the only thing i had caught there's a really beautiful really i just want to give you a little reading of a passage to show you how it reads usually a colt learns from its mother it hears her wicker at sound of man's voice it sees her gallop to meet him when he comes down to the coral. It sees her lip man's hand. Soon the colt discovers that man represents the good things of life. Delicious surprises in the way of sugar, carrots, sweets, apples, and so much more. And presently it is trying to please man, too, not only to be rewarded with something yummy to eat, but to enjoy the tingly feeling of his hand or the pleasant sound of his voice. With Phantom and Misty, things happened the other way around. So there are no, there were, I didn't encounter any words in this entire book that were hard. You know, a lot of older um, classics are difficult. There are words even I don't know sometimes, but this one was easy to read. I would say, to be appreciated, I would say middle school through adult, um, for sure. And I just love the book. I can't recommend it enough. Hop on to eBay or Amazon. You can get these in paperback trade back reprints the regular but i love the vintage the originals you can find a used one probably on ebay um a lot of them do come in soft cover the misty um of chin chickatigue <laughs> that's a hard word um series come in a, this size but they're they're soft cover but uh, if you really search you can find the hard covers and they're not that much more so anyway this is my recommendation watch my channel for reviews on black gold and stormy misty's full which as soon as i get them i will read very quickly and put up my reviews thanks for watching